All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting for Tuesday, December 4th, 2018. At this time, would you please join me in saluting the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, before we jump in, um, just for the record, uh, Ms. Stronach will not be able to join us tonight. She had an emergency meeting for her work, so um, um, so I just wanted to highlight that for the record. Um, that said, why don't we jump right into our schedule items. We have a schedule item for 7 o'clock for a poll petition for Clark Road. Uh, I make a motion to waive the public meeting. It is a public hearing, so we have a motion to waive the public hearing. I have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. At this time, would you like to please state your name and occupation for the record? How are you doing? Joe Antilly, National Grid Electric. If um, anybody has any questions about the job at Clock Road. Maybe want to just describe it just for the residents so we, we got the paperwork, reviewed the paperwork, but just very high level sure. of what we're trying to accomplish with the poll petition for Clock Road. Not a problem. So we're going to be uh, installing a pole in the game where the pole line is now. There's a brand new um, residential house going in, and the pole line's too long to accept a service wire coming off it going across the street. It'd be too low for trucks to get over or pull over. So we're going to put a pole to get height and keep it safe and um, make sure the customer doesn't lose power. So that is regards, that's um, with regards to the poll petition for Clark Road. Um, at this time, I'm going to open up to the board for questions, concerns. It's a simple poll. If you're running just a simple poll. Simple poll in the game. Right? Correct. No questions. <clears throat> There's been a, a list of uh, butters. Is this the list of the butters? Is there any feedback around that? I haven't heard anything negative or positive about it. Pretty simple job, so sometimes we don't get anything. I can see behind us the audience is stacked, so. They're very happy. Good, I hope so. Uh, Mr. Johnson? I don't have any questions, no. Okay. Thank you. Uh, seeing those questions, what's the pleasure of the board? To approve the uh, oh. poll uh, installation at the location. I have a motion to have a second. All those in favor? Thanks, Street. Aye. I'm sorry, Opposed? thanks, Street. Unanimous. And I believe we're past 705, so let's jump in. So we have another poll petition. Uh, this one is for Pine Street. Um, I'll make a motion to waive the public meeting. I have a motion, I have a second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. All right, why don't we jump into the, to the second order of business, the poll petition. Again, this one is for Pine Street. Again, just. Yep. Um, so actually, actually, we reversed that. On Pine Street is the, is the residential service, and on Clark Street is the Tammy and Honda job. I, I reversed the two. Okay. So, okay. So, so this one here, we're going to highlight. So we just did. We just talk about so the, the Pine one, Street. Okay. So we're going to go to Clock Street. Clock Road. Yes, Clock Road. Okay. Which is in the back of um, a Timmy and Honda. They're building a brand new um, business, a new building to a Timmy and Honda, and we are not going to be adding any new poles. The only thing we're going to be doing is taking the overhead transformer down and installing uh, primary conduit going into their property. So we'll just be running in the public way on the sidewalk to the back side of the pole. So the only interruption will be about three feet into the public way and then directly into their property to a transformer. Any questions from the board? Uh, again, this one's associated with Clark Road. Yeah, I'll get you with that. Um, where it's, I understand you put an underground conduit to the new building that's going down there. Correct. It's going out to a sidewalk out of the area. Is the sidewalk is going to be replaced in five? There is no sidewalk there. It's just a sidewalk. Yeah, it's just a public, it's just a public way. Okay. It's only grass. The sidewalk that was there. So. There's no sidewalk being, there's no sidewalk existing. Okay. It's just, um, the sidewalk area, so if the town ever decided to put a sidewalk in, so that they could do it. The layer of the possible sidewalk. So we have to, we're asked the permission to put it there. Okay, uh, so other than the French shape, putting a conduit 
conduit out to install the new power to the building. There's nothing else that's really... Yep, it won't be in the road at all. It won't interfere with any kind of traffic or the dead end road either way, but... I have no other questions. There's no other concerns. There's only one house on the back side of that, and then there's a highway, and it's all a Timmy and Honda. Johnson? Um, no questions. No. Okay. Uh, the same here. All the paperwork is in line. Um, looks like nothing out of the ordinary. So at this time, what is the pleasure of the board? I'll make a motion to approve the uh, installation of uh, the, uh, the power conduit going to the new, um, going to the business and uh, we'll get to the address of it. Clock road. Clock road. 150. 150, thank you. Uh, I approve the, uh, the underground electrical conduit to 150 clock road. I have a motion. I have a second. All those in favor? Aye. I oppose. Unanimous. Thank you very well, much. Thank you very much. Have a nice night. Mr. Chairman, just through you to our secretary, I just want to make sure we got those two straightened out. Okay. So the record's appropriate. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, at this time, I'd like to open it up for residents for public comment. Seeing none, move into new business. So for the new business, the first order of business is the town manager goal, goals and objectives. Before we jump into that, Mr. Montori, um, I just kind of want to level set, I guess I'll level set the conversation just for the residents. So. Um, it's always been my style as a chair to open it up to, to the floor first. That's what I'm going to do. Um, this, e this evening will be no different. So what I want to do is kind of set the stage and provide a high-level process of what we're doing just for the residents. So first and foremost, annually, Mr. Monturi presents his goals uh, and objectives um, you know, to the board. And at that time, we typically do uh, kind of ties into the board's annual performance evaluation, which is new business under number four, town manager performance evaluation. Um, along those same lines, this time of year, Richard and staff are actually proposing and starting, it's just beginning the budget process for FY20. Uh, last but not least, I'm trying to highlight the whole process here, historically, reactively, the board then, after we do the, the after Richard performs his goals and objectives, the board conducts the annual review. Uh, Richard is beginning his budget. Historically, the fourth order of business would be for us, this, the board, is then to consider um, to discuss Richard's compensation piece for Richard. And typically, we conduct that through executive sessions. Um, this year, the board took a different approach, as we know, meaning what we did in November, we had two executive sessions to kind of um, talk about Richard's compensation pre piece prior to Richard's uh, goals and objectives and our evaluation. And um, so we conducted two executive sessions in November. The purpose of the executive sessions, as I stated, were to discuss the town manager's performance and compensation. Now, we may, through those executive sessions, we may or may not take any actions. Uh, I can tell you during the executive sessions, speaking for me, not the board, but two things were crystal clear in the executive sessions for this year. Um, number one, for the past nine years, for whatever reason, not getting to the reasons, it was pretty clear that we missed, um, we missed some opportunities to provide Richard with what we call his COLA, or simply put, cost of living adjustments. So that was one glaring um, takeaway from the executive sessions. Um, number two, another glaring obvious piece to me was, and this was pointed out by three of my colleagues, and specifically Mr. Todd Johnson, was the landscape for town managers has changed. And what I mean by that is the landscape around total compensation in the last couple of years within the Merrimack Valley, um, the total compensation for town managers gone, have, have gone up significantly. Um, and some of the reasons for that through executive session were folks are retiring. Um, there are fewer qualified candidates. Uh, and the last thing that we want to happen is for Mr. Monturi's phone to ring across the 35 plus communities, towns within the Merrimack Valley um, to acquire Richard services. So the bottom line 
through the executive sessions were, were compared to a good many number of town managers within the Merrimack Valley, it was, it was obvious that Mr. Monturi's salary and overall um, compensation has fallen behind. So I'll share those outcomes um, of, the, uh, of the executive session after Mr. Monturi does his goals and objectives, after the board discusses his evaluation, and then it will be my turn to grab the mic, we'll talk about, I'll talk about my evaluation, and then short and sweet, I'll provide the summary of the executive um, of the executive sessions that we conducted. So again, this year we did a little bit differently, um, and I think it was the right way. So with that being said, Mr. Montori, uh, I'm going to turn it over to you to present your goals and objectives. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, before I jump into the goals and objectives that I have set forth to the board, um, or will set forth to the board regarding uh, the <coughs> remainder of FY 2019 and, and beginning of 2020, I just quickly want to go through a status of my uh, goals and objectives for FY18 and 19. And uh, unlike um, the department heads when they present their goals and objectives, they present them before the fiscal year begins and covers a full fiscal year. Um, the way mine falls, it, it, it's, they, my goals and objectives straddle two different fiscal years. So uh, just quickly looking back on what I brought forward for FY18 and 19. Um, and this isn't in a PowerPoint presentation. I'm just going to go through them in summary as, much fast, as quickly as I can. Um, the first goal uh, was capital projects and improving capital and improving planning. Um, one of the items on there was to develop a long-range plan for uh, recreation field maintenance, and uh, that was done in conjunction with the uh, new with the facilities manager um, this past year. Um, second item was to complete the design and start construction of the new center fire station. Uh, the design uh, is at 60% uh, uh, currently, and we should be complete uh, in January 2019. Uh, another uh, item within that goal was to secure funding for the improvements to the DPW facility and um, start that project. Uh, we have not done that yet, and we're in the process of identifying um, funding and deciding on what improvements need to be done, and we hope to bring something forward um, possibly uh, at Maytown meeting uh, uh, in 2019. Uh, one of the other items was to complete the design and start construction of the Regional Emergency Communication Center. Uh, the design is complete. We'll be going out to bid with that uh, in January. Another goal under this section was, another item under this section was to continue work with the sc uh, school administration and elementary school building committee uh, regarding the construction of new elementary school. Uh, the goal uh, last year, or the item under this goal, was to identify a, dis uh, a site and begin design. Uh, that, is that has been complete. Uh, the Ryan School uh, was identified as a site to build a new elementary school, and we are in the process of um, uh, designing that new building. Um, work with the uh, Department of Public Works to secure funding and implement the sidewalk uh, master plan. That is also uh, complete. The sidewalk master plan has been complete by the DPW and we've secured funding for uh, what is the beginning of a sidewalk program uh, in town. As many of you know, uh, we already started work on a new sidewalk on Pleasant Street, and we completed work of a new sidewalk on Shawsheen Street. Uh, another item was to secure funding to begin structural and code improvements to Ella Fleming School. Uh, that has not begun yet, and that will carry over into one of the goals I talk about uh, in a few minutes. Uh, work with the assistant town manager to complete and rehabilitate the state hospital cemetery. Uh, we've completed phase one of that project and we're now developing our maintenance plan uh, and to begin phase two of that uh, project. Uh, finalizing a lease um, and start the process of installation of solar um, panels on Sutton Brook. Uh, that uh, portion of this goal was complete uh, and the uh, solar uh, company has been moving through the permitting process within the town. Uh, complete the purchase of street lights uh, from National Grid. Uh, that was uh, a goal, a part of this goal was complete uh, this year. Uh, we have purchased the street lights for a dollar from National Grid and work should start over the next few weeks and um, to convert the lights to LED lighting. Uh, and that is a six week project. Uh, as always, we want to continue seeking funding for um, Route 38. Um, uh, this goal is just is going to be an ongoing um, goal, not not just from the previous years, but to the upcoming years. But uh, we have made uh, great strides. Uh, obviously, we're moving forward with South and Salem uh, intersection. 
Uh, we're going to be uh, final, at least getting design um, brought forward to us from uh, Colonial Drive to Old Boston Road. Um, and as you know, uh, we still want to try to secure funding uh, for mm -hmm. Victor Drive to Shaw Sheen Street and then again from Old uh, Boston Road to Pike Street uh, will be the remaining sections. And then finally, uh, we want to develop a uh, capital improvement plan uh, that uh, one of the, the goal was to, to begin to develop a capital improvement plan that um, uh, allows us to, uh, to address the increased development in town. And I think uh, we've done that over the past uh, uh, fiscal year and uh, we'll continue to do that in the future. Uh, the second goal was to develop uh, new and improved uh, policies and procedures. Uh, the main one for that one was uh, with the Board of Selectmen. Uh, and at the last meeting, the Board adopted uh, goals and objectives, I mean, not goals and objectives, policies and procedures uh, for, um, that were under their jurisdiction. Uh, it was approximately 90 somewhat page documents that uh, had many uh, uh, new uh, or updated or um, uh, previously approved um, policies and procedures codified into one document, and um, that was already complete. Um, the other uh, part of this uh, goal was to, uh, uh, to um, implement a local access uh, television operation, uh, which uh, is underway with the hiring of uh, a new director of telemedia, um, Brian Dorrington, and um, so that is uh, partially complete and underway. And then the other was to you know, work with the zoning bylaw committee and the assistant town manager to um, see the zone, to have the zoning bylaws updated. Uh, that work is near complete, and new zoning bylaws should be brought forward at the May uh, 2019 town meeting. Uh, <coughs> third goal I had was to continue working on land transfers for the Commonwealth. I think this goal will be on my list of goals until I retire, um, because it doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Um, the uh, uh, we'll continue to work with the delegation to uh, see that the cemetery land is transferred to the uh, cemetery corporation. Uh, we continue to work with DCAM and the delegation to see that uh, through. Uh, unfortunately, it's uh, been a slow process. And then finalizing the transfer of recreation fields at Livingston Street to the town. Uh, we've done everything we're supposed to do. We're just waiting for DCAM to finalize the deed and, and transfer it to the community. And then the final goal was obviously the it deals with finances and budget. Um, begin focusing on the budget uh, to maintain uh, and improve building and facilities. Uh, that um, really began and uh, with the hiring of the facilities manager a couple of years ago. Uh, and then we've started to develop a five-year plan for uh, our buildings. Um, the uh, other was to uh, look at the budget to see where we can consolidate uh, areas of the budget, um, and uh, we started doing that with uh, facilities, um, and we'll continue to do that in FY20. Uh, and then prepare the budget, uh, and this is always a goal, to prepare the budget in a way that uh, we deal with the uh, long-term uh, financial stability of the town, and I believe uh, each year we complete that goal uh, with the passage of not only the fiscal uh, 19 budget, but when we move into the fiscal 20 budget. And then again, develop the budget uh, in a way to prepare the town or to allow the town to provide services as the town increases in its development. And each department uh, has done that and will continue to do that uh, as we move forward into FY20. So that kind of is a quick status on how we've done. There's some things that uh, will be ongoing, some things that uh, most things were complete, and others that um, we'll continue to work on and you'll see carry over into the FY20. Uh, 19 and 20 goals. So going into those, uh, again, the first goal is um, uh, capital projects and improvement, pl uh, improvement planning. Uh, the first uh, item under this goal is to complete the design and start the construction of the new center fire station. As I mentioned, that design should be complete in January, and we hope to be able to bid with this project uh, sometime in the May-June time frame. Uh, that's moving along. Um, uh, uh, nicely, uh, as the uh, fire chief was in uh, at the last meeting, giving an update on the project. Um, we hope to be coming forward in May uh, to secure funding for improvements to the DPW uh, facility, and once we do, we'll begin design on that project. That's a goal for the upcoming uh, fiscal year. Um, we've uh, started to identify areas of funding. Um, any uh, uh, funds that we have in place um, 
uh, to help with those uh, with those improvements. It'll be a phased approach to uh, address the most um, important items up front. Uh, it won't be a project that we come forward with uh, the complete uh, funding all at once, but to address the, um, the most serious issues uh, at the facility. Next would be start the construction of the Regional Emergency Communications Center, and that construction should start sometime um, uh, shortly uh, after the winter. Uh, bids will be going out in January, and we hope to have uh, construction to start uh, late winter, early spring. Again, uh, this project uh, will continue uh, for quite some time over the next couple of years. The, you know, one of the goals or parts of this goal is to continue working with the school administration and elementary school building committee uh, regarding the new elementary school. And um, last year the goal was to identify a site um, and uh, move forward and, uh, with that uh, part of the process. Now it's to complete schematic design and secure funding for the project. So we're near completion of schematic design and we will be bringing forward um, uh, a debt exclusion uh, at the uh, local election uh, in April, and uh, if that's successful, uh, we'll be coming forward to town meeting for the uh, actual authorization to borrow the funds. So that's the goal for this upcoming fiscal year. Again, we want to identify uh, a use and secure funding to begin the structural and code improvements at the Ella Fleming School. I think this year will probably be the closest to doing that than we have been in the past. Uh, I've been meeting with um, representatives of the Historic Commission and the Historic Society to, um, to uh, push for a use of the building and uh, hopefully May will be able to come forward with some funding uh, through Community Preservation uh, Act funding to um, begin that process. Uh, continue to work with the state on the remaining improvements to uh, Route 38, those being again from Colonial Drive to Old Boston Road, uh, Old Boston Road to Pike Street and then from Victor Drive to Shawsheen Street. Uh, those are the remaining areas we need to focus on. Uh, and then uh, the work that we know uh, is going to be funded to get that uh, underway. Um, the next is a, is a big area in our capital improvements, our capital projects and improvement planning. Uh, and that's uh, compliance with our stormwater permit. Uh, we'll be coming forward soon with the DPW um, to uh, present um, findings from a report that we're doing, uh, that Weston and Sampson is doing, uh, that's going to identify uh, funding sources to address compliance with our stormwater, which is our drainage uh, and our stormwater permit, uh, but also what resources we will need to comply with our stormwater permit. Um, and, and that's something that I know Brian Gilbert, when he presented his goals, had on there also. And then uh, begin planning for the um, use of the land of the current uh, center fire station is going to be something that's going to need to be discussed. Um, we'll begin design. Um, finishing design and begin the construction of a new center fire station. That's about a 12-month uh, construction process. Uh, and then we'll have the old uh, fire station building to, uh, that will need to be demolished and what plans, if any, we have for the uh, land. And then at some point over the next uh, year, we'll need to uh, work with the school department, and, uh, school committee, school administration regarding possible reuse of school land if the elementary school project moves forward because these will be questions that the public asks. Uh, and uh, it's just, it's, it's part of my goals to, to work with them and uh, uh, assist and come up with a plan for those, uh, those parcels. The next goal is, uh, again, to continue developing and updating policies, procedures, and bylaws. Uh, once the zoning bylaw is complete, um, the next area that needs to be addressed is the town's uh, general bylaws and any recommended changes that are needed. Uh, I have developed a mission statement for a committee to undertake that task uh, once the zoning bylaw is complete uh, to bring a new group of uh, uh, residents and public officials together to start looking at our town bylaws because um, they haven't been updated in quite some time and um, they need to be. Um, in addition to that, uh, work with uh, staff in the office to start developing uh, office procedures. Um, we've had a turnover in staff over the last, since I've been here actually, but mainly over the last few years of a staff that had great institutional knowledge, but none of that knowledge was in a office operations and procedures manual that I think we're going to need in our office. Um, so we want to start developing that so when there is turnover in the office that there's somewhere to go 
uh, and understand how things work. Um, the um, and part of that will be for the for the town manager's office to have their own policies and procedures to think for things that they are responsible for. The board did theirs. Now it's time for the office to do to do their next step. And then again, um, work with the with the assistant town manager and the zoning bylaw committee over the next uh, four months to ensure that the new zoning bylaw changes are approved and implemented. Uh, a great deal of work went into those, and uh, based on my discussions and what I know of the, the changes, um, they're uh, uh, a great improvement to what we currently have, and uh, we need to see this uh, this work through. Goal three will be work with uh, again the Commonwealth and the land transfers. Um, Maybe this is the year we get it done, but uh, it has to stay on the radar screen. Um, the interesting part, the most important one of these two uh, areas that we're working with uh, the delegation and working with uh, the Commonwealth for land transfers is the cemetery land. They're going to run out of land. We need to secure land for them. It has to be the priority item in this in this goal. And um, you know, I want to see over the next year um, this this actually happen. We have some ideas on uh, how to address it. We've come up with some creative thinking over the last uh, few days on how to address it. Uh, but getting the cemetery land uh, transferred to the cemetery corporation is important. And then f finalizing the recreation fields deed is, uh, is uh, the next. <clears throat> and then finally for goal uh, budget slash operations. Uh, and under this, uh, as we all know, our Finance Director Ron Florino is retiring on January 4th of uh, 2019, so that's coming up within the next month. Uh, I want to work on the restructuring of the Finance Department um, uh, to uh, ensure that uh, we have a smooth transition in the um, transfer and, and Ron, when Ron retires. Uh, and uh, we've already worked out uh, some uh, ideas and uh, I'm moving forward with that restructuring. but. Restructuring the finance department and implementing that restructuring plan is going to be important. Uh, we want to ensure that we have a successful FY20 budget process. Um, since I've been here, we've been successful in all of our budget process um, processes that we've gone through with the finance committee and the board of selectmen and the school committee and ultimately town meeting. And uh, FY20 should be no difference, but it's always a goal to make sure we have a smooth process and build upon what we've done in the past and correct any areas that we saw deficiencies. Uh, in FY20, when we go through the budget process, uh, a major goal of mine, and I know it's of this board, uh, is to start shifting back some of the sewer debt from the tax levy back into the sewer enterprise fund and start bringing some tax relief to the residents in that area if we can. And um, uh, we're going to be focusing on the uh, enterprise funds uh, shortly after I finish the general fund budget, but we've already started thinking about how we're going to do that, but that's a major goal coming into uh, FY20. Uh, the fourth item in this area is to streamline and consolidate uh, utility billing in depart for departments. Uh, right now, um, if you um, talk to, uh, to staff in the uh, manager's office, the number of um, utility bills that come in for street lights, for buildings, for, uh, you name it, uh, is quite cumbersome. Uh, we want to start streamline, streamlining and consolidating that utility billing into um, hopefully one bill or, or less bills uh, for them to manage and for them to um, oversee so we don't miss anything. Uh, the next is to staff and properly uh, equip and locate a studio for the telemedia department and to start improving programming. Uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, the start was hiring Brian Dorrington uh, to the uh, director's position. Uh, so far, he's uh, done a great job in, in purchasing and, and, out, and uh, uh, outlining what equipment needs to be um, um, brought into the department, uh, assessing what type of equipment we currently have. Um, we're going to get ready to start advertising and hiring a uh, operations manager for the department, but uh, we need to decide on where we can locate a studio. Um, and uh, we're going to work with the school department uh, in that regard. Uh, but uh, this is something over the next um, few months, six months at the latest, we want to see up and running and have fully operational uh, is, a, is, a, is the telemedia department's programming. And we've already started that. Uh, and then uh, develop uh, an RFP and undertake the sale of certain town land uh, that residents and abutters have shown interest. Um, we, uh, this is something that um, 
we have uh, inquiries uh, frequently from residents who are interested in buying a small undersized parcel to add to their land or that there's land that the town owns that may have some value in development that uh, we may want to utilize for affordable housing. Um, so we want to start looking at um, uh, developing and issuing an RFP uh, over the next year to, uh, to address those areas. And that is it. All right, thank you, Mr. Montori. So at this time, if, if we have direct questions on Mr. Montori's FY18 goals and objectives and FY20 goals and objectives, um, we can have questions now. And I think when we do our evaluation, Mr. Montori, I'm sure that um, some of the questions might come up directly related to goals or objectives that are listed and or not listed. So I'm open either way. So any direct questions for Mr. Montori at this time before we jump into um, evaluations? Um, I just have one. The, uh, I noticed that you mentioned with the cable advisory, um, I'm going to be talking with the school committee and talking with them. Obviously, we're bringing in the cable advisory. Yeah, yeah that, that's, <clears throat> that's a great question. I should have mentioned that. So. Um, I wasn't able to do it this week because of uh, time constraints, but I'm hoping I can get a meeting of the Cable Advisory Committee uh, next week, um, probably towards the end of the week. Uh, bring Brian Dorrington and the Assistant Town Manager into the meeting and start discussing with them uh, what Brian uh, has for a vision, uh, what uh, his evaluation so far has uh, determined about the current system that we have, and just uh, have him listen to them uh, mostly on what they uh, learned from their uh, year to year review of cable operations in other communities and what they'd like to see uh, him focus on. So we tend to do that. Yeah. Mr. Brian Dick. Okay. Uh, a couple quick questions, I guess. Um, the guy that the sidewalk master plan um, is, on the, is on the FY18. So is that, is that complete? That master plan is complete? I mean, the funding is yeah, correct. So the, the plan is complete. Um, we have secured some of the funding um, through um, free cash transfers in previous fiscal years that they're working with. Uh, they also received uh, funding through the Complete Streets program to do some sidewalk work already in town, and they'll be applying for other Complete Street sidewalk money in the future. But. Um, in the five-year plan that's presented by the DPW, the previous one and the one that will be coming forward for FY20, they'll outline the years and the need, the funding source needs um, for sidewalks. Okay. Does, does that get on the on the goals for FY19, or just because I, with the DPW funding, that made the FY19 goal with 97 capital projects with the sidewalks? That, I just don't want yeah. to lose. Uh, yeah, no, that's it, it didn't make it onto the and it, and it should have because that should be a continuing item and then we can yeah Yeah, but I can I can uh, add that to this uh, documents and update the board Okay, no, that's a good point. I can add that as a ninth uh, item under capital uh, continuation of sidewalks Mm -hmm. Already, so that's great. Yeah. And, you know, I think um, I had a question around the regional dispatch centers. Are there any other partners other than Tuxbury and Drake? It's that? still it's still uh, Tuxbury and Drake at the moment. Um, yeah, we understand that uh, State 911 is still talking to communities and okay. trying to incentivize them to join. But right now, it's still us. And then. Uh, you talked about phase funding for the DPW facility. Mm -hmm. Is there something in mind that's kind of the, I know we had a presentation and rather not to get into the details, but is, is it just trying to kind of think about like the first, maybe the project or the first sure. phase of funding is that, that was, might have been presented? That might have no, that's, a, that's actually, that's, that's another good question. So the way we've approached the DPW facility is um, CBI, um, consultants are assisting uh, the DPW with um, 
design engineering feasibility work at this point. It's not full design, but it's just getting us um, having uh, structural engineers and architects look at it. And what they're focusing on at the moment is um, addressing all of the um, building envelope issues with the current building, um, roof, walls, things like that, um, the, uh, the, uh, the systems for heating and air conditioning. So, so making sure we tighten up the building. And then the other is to, uh, thought has been, do we demolish the parts of the building that um, are not really prone to renovation in building a new um, building to house equipment, um, to house a new mechanics bay, and to house a um, wash bay. Uh, the original thought was to try to retrofit as much as we could into the existing building. I think we're finding out that may be too costly. Uh, so the thinking now is to keep a portion of the building that can be renovated um, easily and then um, knock down part of a building and add just uh, those items that I just mentioned. The priority areas in the renovation of the DPW are building envelope, mechanics bay, wash bay, and those are things we're going to try to address. From a funding standpoint, we've identified a couple of areas. Obviously, it's going to be, it could be a combination of the stabilization fund. It could be a combination of uh, there's some there's surplus in our overlay reserves that we'll be able to use some funding. There are there's funding either in retained earnings or water and sewer stabilization funds, and we're comfortable using those because we're addressing water and sewer department issues. So we're going to try to cobble that money together to get as much of what I just said done. And if we can't, it'll be phased in over a couple of years. And I'll also look at, depending on how the budget shakes out over the next few weeks in FY20, um, maybe look at a small borrowing of funds that I know we can absorb within the budget, because there's not going to be a debt exclusion for this project. Anything we do is within the budget. So those are the areas we're looking at. Okay. Oh, that's great. Great explanation. And then the last thing, Mr. Chair, uh, two, of the, two of the things that I like to see uh, in the goal is the planning for that Senate fire station land and the elementary staff and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be, I'm sure there'll be a lot of feedback, a lot of discussion. Uh, yeah. Like I said, the public's going to be asking about it. And, uh, there's any way to use some of that to help offset expenses in any which way. I don't know uh, how that can happen. And then obviously, uh, you can comment on that, but also the, the, uh, the shift as soon as that to attack off the tax levy to the Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we, on, on both those issues, so right now there really isn't any, I, no, no thoughts on what to do with the land for the, the fire state, the center fire station, um, and obviously um, discussions need to take place with the schools on what to do with the school land, um, but we need to stop thinking about it, because as you just mentioned, some people are going to ask, are you going to sell it and use that money to offset costs? Um, and if you sell it, what are you going to sell it for use? And then you have whole issues with impacts to neighborhoods. So there's a lot of things to, to discuss, but we need to stop thinking about it. Right. Start getting. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And then shifting the money. Um, that $740,000 that the board had voted to shift a few years ago to help keep rates um, not low but not have a big impact not have a big increase um, that's the area we're going to focus on how we can start shifting that back so mr. Todd Johnson uh, thank you mr. chairman um, just very briefly because some of the comments um, that have already been offered are things that I was thinking about but um, I want to commend you your 18 and 19 goals um, as you've done for a number of years um, they're um, they're easy to evaluate you either have completed them or you haven't um, and I think uh, that's something that is very tangible and um, I appreciate in the context of um, it makes uh, evaluating progress very easy um, in the context of 
Um, you've identified the priority areas. You've identified the things that tactically um, you believe are important, and they've you know emanated from discussions with this board and from your departments, etc. Town meeting in some cases, um, but they all have merit uh, being on here, and um, it's easy to you know determine that we've either made some progress or we haven't. And, I give you credit because as I was keeping track of this, I think on your um, 18, 19 goals, there were three um, specific items that you've made some progress on but haven't completed, and you rolled all three of those into your next year goals um, for 19 and 20. So um, I think that's um, a, a good indication or indicator of um, you know, progress and, and movement in the right direction. Um, one question I have for you, um, and I am, would be remiss, I don't recall the specifics, but one area that um, I'd like to ask you to look at in the finance area is um, every year when our independent auditor comes in and they issue reports and they make recommendations on three or four items that have long-term benefit for the community um, from a financial management or a risk management perspective, um, we ought to incorporate those, in my opinion, or at mm -hmm. least consider those as, as goals, because I know you've chipped away at those. Mm -hmm. I think off the top of my head, there are a couple that are still hanging out there that you've worked towards, but we might not be buttoned up tight. <coughs> no, that's a good idea. Um, so I'd, I'd ask you to just look at those mm -hmm. and maybe add those to, to this um, to this document yep, moving like forward. The, definitely. Um, after you take a look at those. Um, but beyond that, um, you know, I, I'm in agreement. Um, I think um, what these two documents underscore is the the level of involvement you personally have in virtually everything that town government touches, um, whether it might be from a budgetary perspective, um, but a lot of these are project-based um, issues that are of significance to our community, um, to um, you know, dealing with uh, the cleanup of issues that we have uh, made decisions on at town meeting. You know, we decided to buy the street lights, for example. Um, but that has to get done. Um, and um, you have taken ownership of many of those things, and your fingerprints, for lack of a better phrase, are um, on a lot of things that benefit our community across the board. So um, that's not a comment about changing your goals or um, adding to them. It's a reflection of, I think, the enormity of the responsibility that you have as a, um, a manager here. And, um, the amount of influence um, that you bring to almost everything that um, affects our community from a town government perspective. And I would add <coughs> in, in that that it also is affecting the schools because if you don't take care of this side of the equation, um, there's less resources for the schools. And I also know, as everyone else at this table does, that you're um, very, very much involved with the school um, capital improvement areas of new school buildings and fields and recreational activities and all of those areas that affect uh, students in Tewksbury and kids in Tewksbury in general. So um, no place is immune. And I think this um, set of goals continues to evidence that. Um, and I think that's a testament to your dedication to our community. So thank you. Mr. Johnson. Uh, Mr. Mark Ratman. Okay, you're good. Okay. I'm gonna, I'll jump in very quickly here before we move to the evaluation. So uh, nicely done, Mr. Montori. Um, maybe just a few comments. Um, so we do have some new state reps um, and a new state senator going to be representing Tewksbury um, up on Beacon Hill in a very short, in the very near future. So with that being said, can we bring in our rep uh, representation on some of these issues that help drive them, uh, help drive some of these issues. The, you know, they're they're new, um, and some of these might be 
um, very good issues to kind of just throw them a bone or low-hanging fruit to say, hey, you know something? Some of these areas have been stalled. Um, you know, start fighting and pressing on behalf of Tewksbury. So I think some of these issues that I, I, I'm reading um, may be associated with our reps and a state center really helping us kind of drive this for Tewksbury. Is that a fair assessment? That's <clears throat> absolutely fair. We um, yesterday uh, had, for, had the first meeting with uh, Representative Robertson, um, talked about the DCAM issues and transfer of land issues, talked about Route 38. Um, told him, you know, what our priorities are and what to get on his radar. So we've already started that process, and then uh, over the next few weeks, I hope to meet the, uh, the new state rep that uh, is replacing um, Representative Lyons. And um, Senator Feingold is new, but he's old in that sense. Uh, so um, he knows all these issues already, and I've already started having discussions with him uh, about uh, the, the, the land transfers, and his response to me was, can't believe those aren't done yet. So um, hopefully I those get back on his radar screen too. So you, you hit, you're right on point with that, that comment. Okay, uh, number two, it seems like the um, secure funding for improvements to the DPW facility and if secure start project design, does that include a wash plant? Yes, that's one of, our, that's one of the priority items is a wash bay. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mr. Kratt, I did not, I apologize. For that. I can see yeah. Mr. Kratman smiling. I know that's yeah. a very big deal. Oh, it's, it's huge. Yeah. for our equipment, and we've been hearing yeah. that for a number of years, so that's, um, that's very good. Um, you kind of touched upon the land deal. You know, where are we at? It's been, seems like, forever as far as the cemetery land and the recreation fields. I mean, what's your take? Are we at the goal <clears throat> line? Are we at the 50-yard line? Are we do, you know, what's your take? It's, it seems like it's been kind of pending forever. Yeah, I mean, it seems like we've been at the goal line for a while. We just keep getting stuffed somehow. Um, it's, you know, there's a new DCAM representative that's taken over the project um, and he's been um, more responsive in the few months he's taken over than the whole time I've been here with other DCAM reps so that's been very positive. Uh, we had an attorney from DCAM and the new rep out here to meet with us. They asked for a fair amount of documents from us that we sent them. Um, so um, I believe they have everything they need um, and it's now just trying to piece it together but um, you know I, I have felt we've been at the goal line for a few years now and it's just getting it pushed over. Okay. Um, number four, um, it, within the golden objectives here is around, um, you know, Mr. Chairman, oh, I'm sorry. I, I mean to interrupt you, but just before you move to the next one, I apologize. I know you, I was a little slow on the trigger, but, fine. you know, it, Mr. Montuari um, made me recall, like, w with respect to the um, Livingston Street properties, for example, um, it's almost as though, to follow on the analogy, the, the goalposts keep getting moved, right? Because the, the state told us, do these things, and you'll be all set. And, and the town has done those things. And then we don't get over the finish line. And then there's more. So we've had this, like, cycle going on and on and on. Um, so that, to your point of um, the delegation can assist in that, I think because um, the Commonwealth's lost some credibility along the way. And I do agree with the town manager in that part of it is uh, turnover of personnel. It's probably likely a benefit in this situation, but there's loss of that historical knowledge. You have to rebuild it all from scratch again. So um, I, I apologize for interrupting you as uh, you were starting something else, but people should understand in Tewksbury that the delay is not on the town side. The delay is absolutely unequivocally on the Commonwealth side, at least as it relates to Livingston Street. The cemetery is a much more complicated issue, but um, they still, we could have had this addressed years ago if people paid attention to it. Okay, very good. No, and that's, and that's, no, that's absolutely fine. And the reason why I brought it up is when Mr. Montori, he reviewed some of the, um, his accomplishments here in FY8, uh, FY19 yeah. was around the lights on the field. So a lot of the residents say, wait, time out. We're putting up lights. We don't own it. And I, we gave the history of like, listen, you know, we're at the goal line. But your point, I like your analogy a little bit better where the goalposts keep yeah. on moving. Yeah. But yeah. we assured the residents that we're fighting hard, we're working hard, and the ball's in the Commonwealth's court, not in Tewksbury. So yeah. um, thanks for the additional color on that. Um, so another point is, I don't see it on here. I want to, this is where the list might get a little bit bigger here, um, is around 
business, 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 driving business within Tewksbury. Um, you know, as we all know, where don't quote me, you know, 80% residential and 20% other. And when we go up in, in, in taxes, because we present items within annual town meeting or special town meeting and the town votes on whether it's a Ford 150 or a budget, we, at the end of the day, you know, have to see what we have for, for taxes coming in and then what we don't have and essentially um, find, those, find those monies. Mm -hmm. um, case in point, this particular year, I think, through voting through town meeting and special town meeting, I think it was quoted that the selectmen went up and the town manager went up 5.8% in taxes, which, you know, we don't sit here and go up in taxes. Our obligation is to say when we do go up, how can we get innovative or creative based on the funding um, to see how we can alleviate that from the residents and or businesses. So the point is, what I'd like to see as a goal perhaps is around stimulation of businesses. For example, we put up an uh, article um, in, in previous town meeting around the bulletin boards and that did not pass. So I'd like to see how we get a goal up there objectives to stimulate businesses. Um, and I'd like to get the bulletin board article back on um, the May town meeting and maybe be a little more crisp with the benefits, the concerns, because a lot of residents had questions there. And along those same lines, is seeing how we get creative as a community. Again, <laughs> thinking about are we drawing new revenues for small business, medium, small businesses, medium businesses. Um, and one example was around, I think it was in previous years, where you and the board came, was very creative around TIFs, um, tax incentive, I forget what the F stands for. Um, Tax, uh, tax increment financing. Thank you very much. Around TIFs advertising, say, listen, if you come in, uh, whether it's private land or town land, we have something to offer. So I don't know how we can stretch that, but I'd like to see a goal uh, of how we try to stimulate small and medium businesses to draw in additional revenues to help alleviate um, some of the tax relief because we are so residential as far as percentages. So. Um, and I think it was what I think I mentioned Thermal Fisher as an example. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was a big time home run um, where we, you kind of stimulated businesses. So that's what I'd like to like to add and put some focus on there with the team and staff um, to see how we can, more, like I said, highlight it, advertise it, and try to draw them in and rethink how we might bring in uh, mm -hmm. those businesses. And uh, last but not least, to add to the goals and objectives um, is around the seniors and. What I mean by that is um, the housing market has gone up tremendously, as we all know, and which means the property two and a half, the taxes go up um, tremendously for all our residents, whether they're seniors um, or anyone in, in, in town. So after speaking with so many seniors, especially the seniors uh, that are on fixed income, um, their fixed income does not go up. So whether the house is $200,000 or $600,000, it really doesn't matter. They're not selling it, they're not getting out, yet their taxes increase and, 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 and their social security or fixed income does not increase. So I would like to kind of put, what's the saying, kind of put the money where our mouth is and say, how can we get creative in some way, shape or form as a community um, to get some type of relief to our seniors and get super creative. Now, that's whether that's creating a, uh, we, one thought is we have committees, we have all kinds of committees for beautification, historical committee, and the, the list goes on. Um, perhaps we create a, a committee with all different slices of different boards, members of the community to say, hey, how do we put our heads together? How do we come together a, as a committee or board and think of what different, um, what different vehicles, what, what different avenues we can take to help our seniors get super creative. I'd love to be the, one of the towns in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to say, hey, you know, we have a large percentage, don't quote me on this, but for the census of two seven, um, 2017, I think it was around north of 25% that are gonna be over the age of, of, of 60. And with the census coming out, the next census very near, uh, in the near future here, I expect those numbers to be very much higher in our community and these are the folks that have lived in this community, grown up in this community, have built this community, continue to volunteer in this community, 
And I think it's the sky's not falling, but I think we're getting to a critical state where I really think we need to look at this hard uh, and differently to say how we, how we can help in different areas, whether it's what's out there right now at the federal level, the state level, the local level, um, as far as funding, programs, what have you. What can we do as far as, I know we have the program now where uh, um, seniors can sign up and work mm -hmm. for X amount of hours and then deduct from the property taxes. Um, you know, I, I like the idea of leave nothing off the table and do we target folks with fixed income, ex again, explore exempt exemptions, refunds in any way, shape, or form, um, whether it's water, sewer, property tax, um, and then of course, how can those dollars be recouped? Um, you know, can we steal, can we borrow, it's not steal, can we borrow from free cash, uh, reserve, but I think you get Easy. the bottom line. Um, <laughs> right, right, right. Did you catch that in a minute? <laughs> Strike that from the record, Melissa. Uh, but I think you get the point. I'm gonna call it Operation Senior Give Back. Enough talk, I think this community can take action. And you know, as far as the Merrim all the communities in the Merrimack, I think Tewksbury, in the next census, is gonna be one of the um, very senior, very mature community and they're getting outpriced. You know, they can't afford to live here. And I think another aspect of that Operation Senior Give Back would be around season, um, senior housing. We talked about what are we gonna do with the fire station? If the elementary schools pass in the next, in the next year, can we use those schools as senior housing? So I wanna take a hard look. I think it's worthwhile to put that as a major goal uh, and, and, and objective in 2000 uh, FY, FY20 to say, what are we doing as a town? You know, talk is cheap, so let's get together um, and let's see what we can put on paper and leave nothing off the table. And like I mentioned to a lot of seniors, a lot of seniors mentioned to me, even if it's, you know, don't, you know, even if it's 50 bucks, 75 bucks or 100 bucks, if, if we just went up $386 in, in, in FY19, um, think about that as a percentage if you knock that, you know, if you knock X amount of dollars off that, off that rate, so we need to do something. Uh, and Lewin, the house is going way up. Um, so again, I, I think you get yeah. the gist. Yeah, I do. Yep. Okay, and um, I like to see that as a top priority, um, you know, as, as a goal and, and yeah. objective. I'll add those to the goals. When I update this, I'll send it back to the board. Okay, very good, and leave nothing off the table yep. um, in, in that area, so. Okay. With that being said, and I think last but not least, yeah, I think um, that is, that's all my questions for, um, that's all my questions. I think at this time, if there's no further questions or comments, we can jump into uh, evaluations, performance evaluations. Mark Kratman. All right, well, <clears throat> this is my fourth year of doing this evaluation, and I always joke about it because it turns into a lot faster, Richard, which is <laughs> not something that we should take back from, but um, as far as I'm concerned, uh, well, I've mentioned this many times. I, my other job, I cover 62 cities and towns. I know many town managers, I have mayors, managers, a number of them are friends, and there is nobody out of any of those people I think is more qualified than Richard Montori to be doing this job. Thank you. He is the most qualified person I've met as being a town manager or mayor. Anybody up in the North Shore, he's the most qualified easily of the things he does. Usually what we do is we go by an evaluation form and we do ratings of what we do and it goes by his managerial skills and budget pre preparations and directions and things like that. Um, instead of going through and be repetitive, um, which we do all the time, what I would like to do is have some discussion about some of the things that you've personally done over the last couple of years when we've gone to different things when people are talking about. Just to tell some of the things that I think um, just in the last couple of years, I know you've been here for many years before myself being a selectman, but over the last four years, I, I've seen you grow immensely in getting out and meeting with the community. That was one of the things that I always would say that we have to work on, working, talking with the community, letting them know what's happening, doing the things that need to be done. Um, and, you know, we had the power outage. When we had, you know, the emergency, everybody lost power, those type of things. The fact that we got out there, everybody was out there working, we were trying to communicate as best we could, getting the police department, we had National Grid, we had the president of the National Grid, the Commonwealth of Mass, come to Tewksbury and put up a command center just to work to try to get those things going. Working with the seniors, going down there, 
making sure everybody was safe, doing those type of things. So it's, it's not little things at all. Those are the type of things that we need to be prepared for. You were prepared. You had everything in place. We, had, we opened up what we needed to do. We had shelters in place. We did everything that we could possibly do. The police department, the fire department, they were ready to go. It wasn't like they were scrambling. They were prepared. And I think it's because of the preparation that the town has done, and that comes from the top. I know they have, we have a police chief and a fire chief, but you know, the other one who gives them the, 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 the ability to do those type of things. Um, simple things are just, you know, budget, we've been struggling. I mean, over the last four years, we're doing much better in the town, um, and which is wonderful. Which <laughs> I've been enjoying it, getting better and better every single year. Uh, but the sidewalks have been a goal. We're working on it. We're finally getting there. We're doing those type of things. The cable advisory, people want to know what's happening in this community. That's the one thing I think we still can do better is getting the communication out there to the people. Yeah, I agree. Uh, like we have on our website, you know, <coughs> we have the list of the sidewalks we're going to be doing. But it's not up on our, like we didn't put it up as like a, like a memo out there saying, go to here. And here's where the sidewalks are, those type of things. People have to go. For us, it's easy. We work in this. We deal with it every day. But for the average day residents to see those type of things, I mean, the post, I think, we'll, we'll see how the, the cable advisory goes, but it's almost like we need a communications manager for the town, for somebody to put some of this stuff out there. That's the one thing I constantly get. It's not just residents. It's everyday seniors. It's a, it's, <coughs> everybody wants to know what's going on. When's the tree lighting? Mm -hmm. When's this? What time is that? Those type of things. We have we use social media for a lot of this stuff, but not everybody's on social media. So those are stuff that type of things that we need to improve <coughs> on. Getting that information out. You've done a wonderful job. You did coffee with the town manager. We've had meet the new residents. I, I mean, a number of things that we've done throughout the town. Just to go out, meet with the residents, do all kinds of things, get the information out, and you made yourself more available to everyone i mean I, I don't know how many times i talk to you during the week and say i got a call from a resident or this or that or whatever it is and you say to me well just have them call me and i'm like i'm not sending everybody to you you, you never be able to do your job so i i'll take the i'll listen to them i'm sure every single one of us on this board gets questions and we don't know all the answers a lot of times we have to come to you with you know what's going on with this because you're preparing the budget putting the things together you keep us updated on unbelievable Every week we get to update what's going on, how things are being prepared, how we're doing financially, what's going on. Um, I can't commend you enough. Um, it's almost like you have to, I don't know how you get it done. Uh, <laughs> some of the things like I think we've spoken to in the past, trying to delegate it to the assistant town manager and take him <coughs> more things to do mm -hmm. to try to do that. And I, can, and I see you doing that a lot more, um, especially working economic development. I've you know, dealt with Steve, done those type of things, you're passing things off so that you can get the, the hard things done. The, the improvements we've done down Livingston Street, you know, the, the, all the things that we've done throughout the town, you know, just seeing the rec center being taken care of better, the, the basketball clubs, the things for the kids, get the kids off the street, <coughs> those are big factors. It's not just that we're building things for kids, we're giving kids other things to do other than hang around in the street corner and get themselves in trouble. And that's, that's very important to me. Mm -hmm. I, I, I spoke to you many times about driving by McDonald's and seeing those kids mm -hmm. coming out and about. And I see it dwindling. Good. I see that we're giving them more to do. We're doing more in the community and we're doing a better job. The seniors, I talked to them. They're very happy with what's going on at the rec center. We have a problem with the floor, problem with heat, certain things that were done. We're taking care of those things. We've extended hours at the library, given more time for the parents to bring their kids there, giving more things for people to do. There's all kinds of, there isn't something that a person can't do in this in this town that every single night you can't bring your children, the seniors can't get out and see a concert, there's something going on. And this community is great, it's a wonderful place to live. And I commend you for organizing, funding, and doing those type of things. So uh, just to go off the record, I think yeah. that there's nobody that's once again doing a better job than yourself. Thank you. Those things. So instead of going by our regular thing, I think I would like to, I just wanted to bring those things forward to say, you know, people don't care day in, day out how you go out. If there's a problem, I'm going and I have, somebody calls me, 
you go and say, let's go take a ride. Mm -hmm. Let's go see them. And those are the type of things that I think you really need to be contented for. Going Thank you. There, take your time in your schedule and getting that done. So if you do them, you get fives across the board from there. Thank you very much. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Crabbe. Mr. Brian Dick. Uh, thanks. <clears throat> this is... Uh, been on the board for eight long, long months. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Think about how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> got the opportunity to work with Richard. Uh, beyond that, as a member of the school committee for six years prior, so <clears throat> through this uh, through this evaluation, we kind of dug down deep through the last seven years that I've been able to work with Mr. Montori. Uh, you know, I've seen him in action. Uh, different forums, whether it be town meeting, board, board of selectmen meeting, executive session, subcommittee meeting, school committee, or just a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, which is so refreshing with uh, Mr. Montori. You know, I, just a couple of highlights. Uh, when I was on the school committee, um, it's great to see how uh, the last seven, eight years he's made schools a priority. He's worked at the schools. He's very creative, supportive with the various plans and Rules. And there were some trying times in that period where we went through a couple of superintendents. Uh, we lost some business managers, and uh, Mr. Montori and his staff didn't miss a beat. So, you know, there, there was it was a consistent voice. It was open suggestions. It brought a lot of um, things to the forefront. And it was a, it was just a true collaboration at that time. And, and the, the reason why I bring that up is I was on another board. Hats off to you and the members of the so I think that, You know, another example is a public event that I that I witnessed uh, firsthand is uh, the breakfast with Mr. Montori presented, and he he represented Tunsbury great and, and a very uh, efficient um, and a great life for me. Uh, just sitting my first week as a selectman, so we went to this municipal breakfast. All the town managers and the members got present, so. some of the other town managers present, I thought we were very, very lucky to have our representation that day. Uh, we hit on all cylinders, and it, I was proud to be on the board and you know, be on the district. And you know, I've talked about that before, but I just, I just saw the other uh, town manager of, of different communities. Clearly, uh, what we have So, personally, some words to describe our town manager. I think professional, I think consistent, fair, open, honest, creative, knowledgeable, and respectful. There's many more, but I live with a uh, quote from Richard Brant Branson. He's the founder of the Bridget Airlines. And he says, Respect is how to treat everyone, not just those who want to impress. And I believe uh, Richard shows that same. Um, thought process when I talk to a one on one and when I see him doing very good. So, in my eyes, we're very lucky to have um, we have the original. Thing. Obviously, the goals tonight, we could have probably all the other things, you know, Mr. Johnson mentioned all the other things you do, right? I mean, we could have filled up a ring of paper with that in addition to the goals we have. So, I think your communication is. is uh, right on. I think your consistency, your open door policy. I think, um, you know, just seeing the, the, the attentive to clearness, communication, the last town meeting we had and presented the information to the residents. Uh, we know you've done that in the past, but <coughs> this time it was more clear mm -hmm. for a, a board member. So I appreciate that. I appreciate the boards and policies, the amount of time that you put into it. Uh, that helps the town, it helps us. And you're planning for more than that. Mm -hmm. It was fantastic. So, just to kind of sum up here, um, as you as you can see, I'm, I'm very happy with you know, the job that Rich is doing. But if you look at the rep, you know, the document that you gave us, just to touch on a little bit, and maybe find Mr. Johnson might too. The retrospective since FY 2010, right? It's eight years of um, leadership. 
and, and Richard would be the first one where it says it takes an army and uh, a good team, hard work, and some sacrifice. It also takes a good leader, I think we have. Huh? So if you think about where we are as a town in the, in the area of services, you know, you can go down, uh, our beautiful town hall is open five days a week. Our police department has more officers, our fire department has more officers, office, um, more staff equipment, uh, protection for our town, our senior center is, open, is reopened five days a week, with more staff, uh, the library, uh, DPW, all those areas, our veterans um, have a better budget each year from, from when we started. And, it, and again, it takes a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I know it's not just you, but um, you know, Mr. Johnson served with you for a long time, so that's off to you too. Um, but, Making schools a priority, you know, uh, nine nine million uh, nine million dollars from the stabilization fund in one time expenditures for schools. That's fantastic. <coughs> Five million for the towns. You know, you plan. You, you, you're, you're saving the town millions of money, millions of dollars, right? By refinancing, being crafty, creative. I like that stuff as a businessman, as a financial guy. So uh, you look at our bond rating. Double A minus to double A to B plus plus. Uh, that, that doesn't go without, without a lot of hard work. So, with that, there's obviously room for improvement. Absolutely. Yep. You know, so, uh, I don't think it's, it's directly on you, but you, know, you are our, our, our leader, you need the staff. I think some of the things that I'd like to see maybe go alongside um, Mr. Kelly's um, goals, but more Merrimack Valley communication relationships. I think that's important. Um, not to take your eye off the ball in the berry, mm -hmm. but uh, if you could um, continue to represent the day that I saw you, um, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. So if you can maybe think of those opportunities sure. to say, hey, uh, Mr. Cohen Chelsea, Mr. Toy, Mr. Turksbury, we invigorate 38, the curb appeal, right? And, Thinking of sidewalks, right? Paving, uh, curbstones, something like the record that's gone through. And I know that they've done it maybe a different way, but boy, if we could ever get that right down 38, that special look that would bring Tewksbury at the top of, of the state. Um, obviously, your, your assistant town manager is somebody we need to draw, draw on. But pulling those big companies into Tewksbury, Mr. Kelly mentioned. Um, it's going to take all of us, not just Mr. Montori, but that's what I'm, I'm hoping that we can focus on. And then, and then there's other things, but if you think about the chapter for the subsidized housing, that inventory is below 10%. We mentioned at that municipal meeting, uh, breakfast, that it was unacceptable. I agree. And I know we're working towards that. And if we can work as a team to get us in a better spot on that. And then the last is the seniors. I agree, Mr. Kelly, if there is some type of relief, maybe increasing that senior uh, give back uh, for something that they do. You know, a lot of seniors help out in schools, but maybe that's a little bit of a bump. You know, mm -hmm. 5000 is the limit. Mm -hmm. the line, but yeah. maybe, it's, maybe it's there. So, I'm extremely happy with uh, the job that you're doing. Mr. Montori, I, Thank you. I um, enjoy serving alongside you. Thank you very much. Very good. Thank you. Mr. Brian Dick. Mr. Todd Johnson. Yeah, so I'm going to, I think, approach this a little differently, too, and first tell you that I'm very, very unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's because my colleagues who spoke before me took uh, most of the topics and areas that I was going to touch on. So. Um, hopefully I got a few people who might be watching to take attention there for a second, but um, it won't be a surprise to um, residents who have followed um, this board for any length of time that um, I'm a Richard Montori fan, and I would like to think that um, in my background and training, um, educated to be objective as a lawyer and when clients come to work with me or I have 
um, clients that uh, I'm, I'm working with, um, you can't necessarily um, be blind. You have to look at the facts um, and you have to make strategic decisions or decisions um, that um, are based on what you have in front of you for evidence. Um, so while I sit here and say I'm a Richard Montori fan, it doesn't mean that I am blind um, in the context of um, overlooking evidence. Um, and what I would suggest is, um, and similar to some of the comments Mr. Crapman made and Mr. Dick has made already, um, I've looked around and I think about the stuff that goes on a few minutes ago, a short time ago, I made a statement here that talks about or talked about um, all of the things that you touch in our community and um, it applies in the context of your performance evaluation because um, what, um, what I see is that we are fortunate to have a um, career focused um, manager experience manager in the public sector, public realm, and they are getting harder and harder to find. And we'll talk about that a little bit more um, later on. But um, we are very fortunate to have someone, and not so much that you have, quote, experience, but that you are committed to it. It is um, what drives you every day. We as select men and women um, have occasion to talk to you early in the morning um, and you have and bring the same approach and attitude to solving problems at seven o'clock in the morning as you do at three o'clock in the afternoon we talk to you at uh, you know um, nine o'clock on a Sunday night and if the Patriots won it's a good conversation <laughs> but um, most of the time they do thankfully um, but it, you bring um, accessibility and you bring a um, commitment level to our community that, in my opinion, um, to kind of quote Mr. Crabman, is second to none among your peers and colleagues. So um, that is important. And I think you, the fact that you take ownership and responsibility, and I've seen you do that countless times over the years, when there's difficult issues, there are things that are challenges, um, you don't run away from those. You're kind of like our firefighters and first responders at the police department. You head to the issue. You head to the danger. Um, and you, you take those things on. And to me, that's a sign of a committed person, a capable person, um, and an effective person in, in the role of um, our um, effectively day-to-day -day manager here. Um, CEO of an organization in excess of a hundred million dollars. Um, so I, um, I couldn't be happier in that context. But to talk a little bit more about evidence, right? Um, Mr. Dick mentioned um, some of the things like the bond rating, but, um, and he talked about the town meeting handout. Um, so those are areas that I think speak volumes about the strides that have been made under your guidance and leadership in terms of communication to our community, in terms of information that's available, particularly about the budget, because it all starts with the budget. Um, you just went through goals. You've showed us a pathway to a number of areas, which is important. Um, but independently, um, we have independent auditors who come in here every year and for all intents and purposes have never found um, anything of concern. They've always come in here and said, Tuxbury has its financial house in order. Um, and that doesn't happen just because we wake up one day. It happens because there's a lot of work that goes on five days a week, 52 weeks a year. Um, we see that the Department of Revenue um, responds positively to Tuxbury when you and we make decisions at town meeting and, and at other decision points and we submit information for approval from the Department of Revenue that is critical to our ongoing business um, operations. And um, we've never had pushback from the Department of Revenue. We've never had challenge by the department 
that our numbers are wrong, that our um, decision process is flawed. Um, again, to me, that's about uh, professionalism and credibility. And most importantly, Mr. Dick talked about it, but independent rating agencies, um, clearly, um, they look at more than the 62 communities that Mr. Crabman works with. They will look at many, many, many more across the country. And what they see is that um, we're, we're in the upper echelon of bond rating um, for a reason, and that's a reflection of good work that's been done here and financial stability. And when you read their reports, it talks about capable management, strong management team, um, you know, reliability, good planning, all of those things that have been mentioned earlier. Um, and that is not anybody at this table saying those things that are that is the reflection of um, people don't that don't have a horse in this race they're um, they're making independent judgments about what goes on here um, and I think that speaks volumes um, with respect to um, personnel and employees um, in my tenure here um, you have done an enormous job and continue to to keep um, our employee base um, in a good place, you <coughs> advocate for them appropriately, you negotiate their contracts, you um, bring a reasonable and thoughtful um, approach to those discussions, and I think you've created an atmosphere here where um, all of our employees can be assured that they get treated fairly and appropriately to again quote miss some of mr dick's adjectives um, but you you've created an environment where hopefully um, people want to come to work um, and and do their best for the residents of the town um, and that's no easy trick because i was here um, when the other side of that coin existed and we had um, you know difficult relationship issues with um, the various unions in town and um, it wasn't necessarily always on their side. Um, I think management and this board, predecessor boards, I count myself among them, um, may have made some um, you know, decisions that we could, uh, if we had a do-over, we would handle differently. But during your time here, you have carved a path that has kept everybody um, in a good place. Um, and I think uh, that is something that is not an easy thing to do in, in uh, today's time. So I commend you for that as well. Um, with respect to relationship and communication to the board, I don't think we have to spend a lot of time on that um, because your communication is, is exceptional. You're accessible um, and responsive. Um, the, the ample examples already given. Um, personal qualities. Um, I will end with um, my comments in this category, um, but I think it all starts and ends with your value system for probably it applies to all of us. Um, but I think that um, you have shown in the way that you've dealt with some very, very, very difficult issues that um, residents in our community uh, are not necessarily aware of, um, but members of the board are. Um, that you have um, an extremely high um, standard of ethics and you have earned clearly um, an exceptional reputation among your peer community of town administrators and town managers. Um, and I know that extends to um, elected officials in, in surrounding communities that we've talked to. Um, and I know for a fact um, and it's no surprise, I don't think, to my colleagues, but um, to have um, other communities who need um, talent like yours um, reaching out to you on occasion is indicative of the high regard that you're held in. So um, we are fortunate to have you. Um, I personally enjoy, um, as Mr. Dick said, um, the relationship that we have in terms of benefiting the town of Tewksbury and carrying out the town's business. And um, I would uh, 
be very disappointed if um, if we uh, had to make changes in that area. So you are um, a key, key person. Um, I think uh, from where I sit, it's the number one responsibility of a selectman is to make sure that we have the right leader, as Mr. Dick described. Um, and, and I sit here tonight and I can tell you that um, I can put my head on the pillow and sleep well knowing that in Tewksbury we have the right leader. Um, so I'll end with that, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, very good. Thank you. And, and just for the record, Ms. Stronick, uh, <clears throat> she's going to do her evaluation on the next Board of Selectmen meeting uh, scheduled in two weeks. So uh, I'll jump in quickly. Um, if Mr. Johnson felt like I'm not going to try to <laughs> repeat a waste word, so I went last. So. Um, I'll just say a few things maybe a little bit differently. For me, I don't think this is a love fest at all. I always say um, credit where credit due, credit where credit due, and Mr. Monturi, um, to Mr. Dick's point, refuses to take credit, always gives credit to his uh, reports, his department heads, and all the workers um, in the community. So I think that's, that's saying something. Um, you know, I do know all your department heads, and so many of the town employees, you know, what's the saying? They would take a bullet for you. Um, so even though you're on a tight ship and you're super professional and you drive out, you, you, run a, you run a tight ship, they would do anything for you. And I think that's very saying, uh, very telling um, as, as a leader. That's very commendable. Um, mm -hmm. I always say, <clears throat> and I kind of borrow this from Mr. Johnson, is um, you're the CEO of Tewksbury. Um, you run the bank, and to Mr. Johnson's point, it's our job to make sure we're, you're protecting the assets, uh, and you do that well. Um, the hours you work, the analogy, the first one in the gym, the last one in the gym, um, I work with you now, not only when I was not the chair, um, I work with you on a daily basis. How many times, Richard? Four, five, six, seven calls a day. I drive you nuts. And I'm oh. telling you, if you don't pick up on the first ring 95% of the time, it's incredible. And you always have the information at your fingertips. You're very well organized. And I, we have helped countless residents on little issues, medium issues, and big issues. And we still have a lot of, what's the saying, um, we still have a lot of issues that are pending. But you fight for the residents. And it's just unbelievable the hours you work. And I think Mr. Johnson might have said it, but you're always available 24-7. And um, you're never off. You're never off. And um, you know, sometimes I know I drive you nuts. But that's just another, another um, tremendous attribute you bring to the table. Uh, always love the focus on, the, on schools and safeties. You know, schools number one and, and 1A is, is, is schools and safeties. It's so important for this community to maintain a um, strong school system as well as, and safety. I mean, that's the characteristics of Tewksbury. Uh, we can't change that. Um, but like my wife, it is my job and the board's job is to hammer you in a good way <laughs> On, on, on savings and return on investment. And again, we talked about a little bit earlier about driving business um, in a good way. And you gave many examples, and, and my colleagues has, have read examples of cost saving, return on investment countless times, but it's our job to continue to hammer you in a good way to never kind of um, stop taking your eyes off the balls in that area. So we always want and need to drive more for the residents. And we talked about you know, that in FY20, how we continue that, build upon that um, in those areas. And last but not least, I think that is a wrap, wrap for me. And like I said, Ms. Stronach will, will do the same thing. Her evaluation in two weeks, uh, we'll use that kind of as a placeholder. We'll put that in the agenda so Ms. Stronach can, um, can review the same. So all in all, as you can see, extremely positive. Um, the devil in me kind of wanted to cross my fingers and cross my toes and hammer you because this, if they watched the video, what a perfect uh, resume builder on behalf of the selectmen. But like I said, uh, credit where credit's to, and it's, it's easy to speak the truth. Um, you know, it's, it's, and that's exactly, I think, what the board demonstrated. Now, just finishing some initial thoughts when we, we opened the meeting was around um, just uh, kind of uh, timelines or history, how we go about this, where you do your goals and, uh, um, goals and objectives, and how we then, in turn, just conducted our evaluation. We talked about his budget time, and then typically we do uh, executive sessions to say, hey, how does Mr. Montour's compensation? So we kind of did that in reverse. And the outcome of those executive sessions 
Um, I think probably, hopefully, the residents know where we're going with this. But we really looked at a number of things presented in front of us. Uh, I think we borrowed a few items from a, other towns that have recently done surveys across 30 of the Merrimack Valley of the communities around the compensation piece, salary plus compensation for their town managers. And um, you were pretty much, I'm going to say, you know, not even in the top uh, 70 percentile. You were pretty close to the bottom. And, and so what we did as a board, um, we, we had conversation, we did use multiple data points, and what the board voted unanimously 5-0 is, is, is two things in, uh, specifically related to your, to your um, compensa total compensation, to your, comp to your base salary, and to your total compensation. Number one, we, we took a 5-0 vote to instruct you to make, um, to have a placeholder for a market adjustment of 20K for the upcoming May 2000. 20 um, budget and again that 20k we're considering a market adjustment um, to pretty much get in line um, with your peers um, based on your experience and um, stature and I think that would put you as far as the 30 plus communities around um, that have town managers that would pretty much put you in the top five percentile based on some of the studies and research we did so um, Hopefully that's a good news story so we can um, secure you for the long haul. And number two, the other unanimous 5-0 boat um, was around uh, adding an additional $2,500 as far as a, a annuity. And just for the, for, the, for the public's sake, you already have in your contract a 2500 yearly annuity, which we contribute to. So again, it's 5000 5000 yeah. So what we're adding to that 5000 thank you, for the correction, is actually increasing that. In addition to the 5000 we're putting a placeholder in for a $2,500 increase to the 5000 annuity. Now, just for the residents, just because we put these in as placeholders and just because we voted um, unanimously to put that in the town budget for a vote, just like everything we put in the warrant, the warrant or, or the articles, it still has to be voted by our residents for approval. So that's what we put forth. The residents will see that in the upcoming spring um, town meeting. So hopefully the town understands why we did it, why we took those actions, and, and, and we're proud we took those actions. You know, we know, as stated, that your phone rings off the hook for people that want you. You're highly desirable. And um, we really want to demonstrate that um, we think you're unbelievable. You execute. There's always room for improvement, as my wife always says. But um, hopefully this demonstrates our commitment and what we think of you as a town manager. Um, and I'll leave it at that. So any additional comments, questions from the board? Yeah, just, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. And, and I appreciate your summarizing um, our activities, and I think you captured the spirit of at least where I sit, um, where I was coming from. But two quick points. Um, I, would, I would ask residents um, to just step back for a minute as it relates to um, how we go about annually um, evaluating your performance, because um, most of us work in the private realm, um, and in that case, generally speaking, um, your performance evaluation is a personal thing. It's a one-on-one -on -one with your manager. Um, your compensation typically is um, a, effectively a private conversation, right? The, the people that have similar jobs to you in, in the organization don't necessarily know how much you get paid and you don't know how much they get paid. And I just want to draw that contrast and encourage people to just think about that for a minute because um, it, it is not an easy thing to sit here every year and listen to um, commentary about what you do, whether it's good or bad. Um, it, that's not um, something that most people want to do. And I think that just should be noted in that context. I ask people to think about that and, and compare to their own personal experiences how you might feel um, in that setting. Um, and again, um, we're required to do this, and more importantly, we should do it, um, because the residents of Tewksbury, 
um, effectively um, pay your compensation and pay your salary and those of other public employees. Um, and, and it brings me to my second point. When I first sat at this table some years ago, um, this discussion, number one, didn't take place. Um, the, the law changed along the way. Um, these discussions took place behind closed doors and residents weren't fully apprised of what respective comments were from each selectman. Um, and that's, again, to be clear, it wasn't that anything was done improperly. The law was changed along the way to require that those comments be done in an open setting. Um, but historically, many communities didn't have that done in an open setting. Um, so there's much greater transparency for residents to understand. And the same applies to the area of um, compensation and employment contracts. And with respect to Mr. T Montori's agreement with our <coughs> community through the Board of Selectmen, um, when we first met with him um, many years ago, um, our goal was to take the mystery away from how he got paid, what his responsibilities were, what the term of his employment agreement was and what the mutual responsibilities were between the board representing the town and Mr. Montori as a town manager. And I believe that we have honored and respected that process um, the entire time um, that you've been town manager here. And that takes both sides to do that. And you've respected that as well. Um, but residents should understand that there's no mystery here. Um, your compensation is in the budget. Um, it's easily identifiable. Your contract is right out there. Um, years ago, when we first um, um, initiated that contract with you, um, we created a, a PowerPoint. We put it up on the screen. We showed residents of the town the elements of your contract. Um, and there's no mystery. So um, everything that Mr. Kelly indicated um, is easily um, backed into you know what the current rate was or is versus where potentially we're heading um, and I don't think people should feel or they should take um, uh, comfort if you will or have confidence that um, there's nothing here um, beyond what is being represented and I know that's not always the case um, but this is as transparent as it possibly can be because number one, it's in the open setting, and number two, because it's the right thing to do, and I know and trust my colleagues um, to do the right thing, and they have. So um, I think that shouldn't be lost on people here because when we step outside, I go to work tomorrow to my place of employment. I don't have my work relationship spilled out in front of all of my colleagues around the Merrimack Valley. Um, and I think that shouldn't be lost on anybody. Very good. Any other additional comments before we move on? Okay, very good. All right, next on the agenda. So, Mr. Montori, what we have next is, first, as far as new businesses around um, license approvals, we have liquor license, a common Victoria license, um, um, license, an amusement license, entertainment licenses, class licenses, <coughs> and pool table license approvals. So essentially, what we do is every year, what we do is assess what we have out there as far as licenses, pull that together, and there's always um, dollars associated with these, each of these licenses to be mm -hmm. renewed. What we do is go through all of the different um, licenses. We see what's still operate, operational, what's not operational. We come up with a list, and then we as selectmen, um, we essentially approve those licenses, sign those, and then essentially they're good for another year in, in most cases, correct? Correct. So I think the so, board, oh, I'm sorry. And just, in, there are all the licenses are in order. We went through the amusement device licenses today. Uh, there are adjustments made for the Elks um, based on what we, um, mm -hmm. uh, what we had on record for them and what was actually found when they were inspected. Um, and the one item they have wasn't a, coin operated one so um, they were adjusted and then uh, you'll see in, in, it wasn't it, 
when the list was, it was a really good list, and the staff did an excellent job this year. Uh, you saw the VFW listed, but next to it, it said closed, meaning they were licensed before, but now they're closed, so there's no licenses there. And then there, were, uh, there was one um, other establishment that um, uh, doesn't have um, uh, automatic amusement devices, but they still want to uh, have a license because they may get them. So, uh, so all of them, we went through them today, all of them are in order. Um, and I would ask if the board is uh, going to approve any licenses tonight, that they approve them subject to um, them uh, paying their taxes in full and all their fees and uh, their um, license fees uh, that are due to the town and that they won't be released until all such fees and taxes are paid. Okay, very good at this point. I'll open it up to the board for questions or concerns. Just a question, just to follow on that, have, um, have you done or begun the process of validating the taxes and mm -hmm. um, fees issue? Yep, there's some that have um, uh, some outstanding ones, but uh, we've been working on them, so uh, I'll have that. What we usually do is this is the first meeting that these get approved, and then I come back to the next meeting in December and tell you which ones are still outstanding. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from the board? What's that, with that being said, what is the pleasure of the board from items five through 10 associated with license approvals? Yeah, so Mr. Chairman, I will, um, I will offer a motion to approve the renewal of all the licenses listed um, contingent on or subject to, as Mr. Montori suggested, the payment of all required taxes and um, other fees, um, utility um, bills related to the town of Tewksbury um, at this time. Very good, I have a motion, do I have a second? I'll second that. Motion is second, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, unanimous. All right, all right Mr. Montoro, you're up again. Now we're up the town manager, I think we have one item under the town manager, the senior yes. town council invoice. Uh, for November 1, 2018 through November 15th, 2018. And uh, to recommend the board approve payment um, to Senior Town Council, uh, uh, actually it's to Town Council in the amount of uh, $3,102.50. So moved. I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye opposed, unanimous. <clears throat> uh, anything else, Mr. Montori? No, other than thank you very much for your kind words tonight. Oh, please, please. <clears throat> I just want to bring up one thing. I know uh, uh, hearing through the town a lot of things is we have another one of our social media things. We've had problems with the leaf pickup. Mm -hmm. uh, I know. Can you just make some sort of sure. uh, what's going on because <coughs> we've got social media, what's going on? So um, they've extended leaf pickup through the end of this week. Uh, they were behind and they were, I think they did a good job catching up for the most part. Um, our calls are much uh, less, um, so they'll be out this week and for the remainder of this week picking up leaves, and they've promised that uh, if they don't finish this week, they'll keep going until they pick up all the leaves in town. They reminded me because I drove by a house that had a couple bags out. So yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. I didn't bring that up tonight. Yeah, I so. I know you put something out, you put it out to the residents. Yeah, and, we'll, and, and we'll get more information out yep. tomorrow. We'll get an update from um, uh, Republic Services, uh, see how they're doing, and uh, they promise to pick up every bag. Let me just add, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I was I was delinquent because of the snow, so I didn't get to do my leaves. Um, Good and, excuse. Don't and I got that. I got my leaves up this past weekend, and uh, I put uh, three bags out um, on uh, Sunday, and uh, this morning they were gone. So um, either one of my kind neighbors took them, or the town <laughs> of Tewksbury picked them up. So. Um, so uh, you are, uh, your notice was well heard in, on Wells Drive, and, um, and the, the process worked. Prove it. Do you have the blisters to prove it? <laughs> Put them up. <laughs> Very good. Um, all right, it brings us to Mr. Brian Dick. We have some minutes to approve. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes from August 14, 2018, regular, regular session, September 12, 2018, regular session, and November 7, 2018, executive session. All right, very good. I've, I have read through the meeting notes. Um, uh, fine with me, no correction, no edit. How about I'm going to open up to the board? No. I'll second the motion. Motion. Oh, I started a motion. Very good. Um, so I have a motion. I have a second. All those in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Um, um, approved, unanimous. So those are for the three Mr. meetings. Mr. Chairman, just a quick question of uh, maybe um, our recording secretary or Mr. Dick. Um, do, you, do we have a sense of um, what meetings we still have to do minutes on? Are we pretty, we're close to being current, right? September 25th and then the October ones. So so just two meetings. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. There are also a couple executive sessions. Yeah. On the last one. Yeah. And then there's two prior to that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I can give you a list if you want. No, I just um, I'm curious where we stand because we th those were three in three different areas. So I just wanted to make sure that we're in track. But that's great. And and um, I couldn't be happier with um, the detail and the timeliness in the minutes, so I appreciate that. Yeah, that's for credit from Melissa and Mr. Mm -hmm. Ryan Dick, so yep. awesome. <clears throat> Agreed. All right, very good. It brings us to board member reports. Mr. Mark Kratman. Um, I'll keep it short and sweet. The beautification committee met last Wednesday, went over a number of things, uh, talking about the year when we do the back, uh, and the uh, getting rid of the trash, the bags at the market baskets and those type of things uh, and those type of other things that they're working to grow, expand, do, uh, uh, do some more cleanups throughout the year, try to do some more uh, adoptions and those type of things. And, uh, so we're still pretty much a year in review of where they're standing and they're sending the thing, uh, comments to the town manager. Uh, economic development met last Monday. Uh, we're in the process of uh, evaluating uh, uh, town um, economic development uh, 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 our, uh, but it's, it's pretty much what it's it gives a what's going on in the town and we're we're updating it we're working with uh, MCOG to update it they sent us a draft we're reviewing it we're going to send back and we're going to update that uh, so this way it gives an update of where the town is Lowell Regional Transit Board is meeting this Thursday, 12-6. Um, and seeing that um, Mr. Stronach is in here, I just wanted to make a uh, comment to the public events celebration. She's a selectman designate. I think they did a wonderful job with tree lighting. I'm sure she'll be talking about that next week as she's here. But they did a wonderful job, well, well organized. Uh, I think everybody enjoyed that. Um, and the last thing I have is, um, you know, I want to so proud of the Redmond. They did a wonderful job representing the town of Tewksbury. I plan on enjoying breakfast this weekend on uh, Selectman Mike McCoy. I had a friendly wager with him for Thanksgiving Day, and uh, he's taking me to breakfast in town this week at the Bradford. If I had lost, I would have been taking him to breakfast in Wilmington, but thank God the, the Redmond did a great job, and I'm going to enjoy a good breakfast this weekend. So that's all I have to report. <clears throat> Mr. Brian Dick. Um, the only thing I have to report is uh, the committee that the subcommittee that serve. Uh, it's the athletic field subcommittee. The next meeting is the 6th, which is this Thursday at 5 o'clock at the town hall. Uh, the meeting is posted. And <coughs> the goal is really to finalize um, the remaining building that has been discussed, and that's the field house. Um, so the field house is uh, just not. Moving up or anything like that, but just what goes into it, and kind of a, a locker room size, a couple of different things like that. The goal is to finalize that on Thursday, and then we're going to be presenting um, in front of the building on the building the week of the 17th. I don't have a date definitely on that, definitely on that, but I let everybody know when we do that. So we can attend, and I think the plan is to maybe come to the last one six months. Todd Johnson. Um, yes, just um, a few items here. Um, the zoning bylaw um, review committee is going to meet next this Thursday night. Um, meetings are starting at 6.30. Um, and as you know, um, that's an ongoing process, but we are working really, really hard to try to um, have everything in order to go to a town meeting in May. Um, so anyone who's interested, um, the meetings here in Town Hall, as I said, starting at 6.30. Um, I also want to mention, uh, it was brought to our attention um, the night of our last meeting, we were all invited, and I know none of us could make it because we were all sitting here, but um, 
senior town council Charles Zerulis was given some recognition by the Greater Lowell um, Y uh, for years of service. And um, I would be remiss, and I think we would be remiss if we didn't take a minute just to recognize that service, because that is um, a purely volunteer service. And um, I believe he personally has been involved with the Greater Lowell Y for more years than we can count. Um, and that benefits a lot of people in the greater Lowell community. But um, to have um, that body recognize um, someone who uh, walks among us and has served our town very well for a long, long time, I think uh, should be commended. And um, I know he's not here at our meetings very often anymore, but he is um, certainly still part of the team. So for the record, I want to recognize that um, accomplishment that he, he uh, has earned. Um, and then the last comment I have is just a very brief uh, anecdote or story um, that I um, came across um, that I think speaks well. Some of the comments that were made um, about um, Mr. Montori and his leadership and the team that he's assembled. Um, but also speaks well of some of the employees that we have in town. Um, I had occasion to uh, be introduced to someone I had not met before, um, was a real estate agent who was involved with um, a parcel of real estate for sale here in Tewksbury. Um, she indicated to me um, that she had moved to Tewksbury about a year ago from one of our neighboring towns. Um, a, uh, uh, the town of Andover um, and she told me a story without knowing who I was or what um, office I hold here um, that in her experience the people in the Tewksbury Town Hall were outstanding and she drew comparisons to her experiences um, in our neighboring communities town hall um, and um, went on at great length about um, the uh, positive response, the uh, friendly environment, um, the willingness to answer questions as she interacted with people here in, in our town hall. And that was not the perception that she took away from interactions in, in our neighboring community. So um, that's just one person. Um, but I think it speaks volumes because that was not a conversation with a selectman from Tewksbury. It was a conversation with a father of someone looking at a house um, and had nothing to do with um, town government. Um, but you um, have an outside person who's now a one-year resident saying, that's my experience in my town. Um, I think it underscores some of the comments that we all made earlier about um, how fortunate we are here in, in Tewksbury. So I just want to share that because it's not every day that you um, have an anonymous conversation, if you will, um, that kind of ratifies, I think, a lot of good work. And I'd ask the town manager to convey that to his staff um, and, and yeah. others here in the building because, quite, quite frankly, I don't know exactly um, the number of people or who that she was interacting with, but I suspect it was on more than one floor here. Um, sure it was. Should be should be noted. Um, so my last comment is um, we, we um, each offered commentary about your performance. And um, I, I would uh, certainly, um, at some point when you're willing, um, would welcome comment on the other side of that coin. Um, if you uh, ever want to give us grades, <laughs> um, we're, we're all open-minded about that because um, we, we have to work together. So um, I, we, sure. I know we brushed over that, but yeah. um, someday you can, um, you can fire us all if you want. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that's so. All right, very good. I have nothing further to add. Everything was mentioned, um, so I'd like to almost end on, on the positive note about the resident. So, um, with that said, do I have a motion to adjourn? You do. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Good night. Thank you. Thank you all.